Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's going on, kids? It's Timmy Joe making videos about computer parts. All of... Uh, don't do that. You broke the video card the last time. How is it going? It's Timmy Joe. And today we're talking about video cards. Specifically, the birth of GCN. Now, this one's a little bit newer than that. But, of course, we're talking about the 7970. 28 nanometers of TSMC's greatest achievement with AMD making a cool 925 megahertz then later bumped to a gigahertz and beyond and I have an XFX version here uh, which is uh, the ghost thermal technology version uh, and I thought it would be a great time to revisit this we've had a lot of uh, demanding games launch uh, it's 2020 this launched in 20, well, it, it launched at the end of 2011, uh, and then I guess would have actually started coming out in 2012 in January, something like that. This is the original Tahiti, the original GCN, the original hot, powerful graphics card that developed the fine wine moniker for AMD. And uh, I went ahead and I've tested it in a bunch of newer games uh, because I was interested like this was always kind of a go-to like budget card to pick up there were a million of them out there uh, the first round of mining really with Bitcoin and stuff these things were like the go-to card for that so there are a butt ton of them around and uh, you know if you bought one of these things for five hundred and forty nine dollars back in 2012 how has it served you? How is it still a viable card today? It, it turns out it, it, it kind of is. So uh, before I get too much further into it, um, I don't know what it is with these uh, ghost thermal technology cards. I have a uh, 78850 here that I always meant to review, but uh, it doesn't really work that well. Sometimes I plug it in and it works fine. Other times I plug it in and it makes the computer beep. Uh, and uh, I don't know, but I've seen this card uh, on plenty of YouTubers like sets and it made me want to have one for some reason because I thought they were some sort of special. They're not really ghost thermal techno like I don't know. They look kind of cool. Um, you know, look pretty pretty cool, right? With the little fan there, the fans. This one's uh, actually this one's still got the little. Ah, I, I took it off after eight years if it's being on there so yeah anyways I'll put this one away we're gonna talk 7970 so I've had several several of these over the the wilds and uh, as far as an eSports video card as far as a uh, you know you're gonna play some online multiplayer shooters this has been a very amazing card for a lot of people that purchased them way back in the day because I, I even have a friend uh, and I know he was using one up until like last year for like all his gaming needs and then he upgraded to an RX 580 kind of not that big of an upgrade there but uh, it would be this has three gigs of VRAM in a time where uh, it was competing against the uh, GTX 680 which had only two gigabytes of VRAM and at the time they kind of went neck and neck until AMD said hey we can improve that 28 nanometer process a little bit and we can get a little bit more than 925 megahertz out of this so we'll relaunch the card uh, as the gigahertz edition and uh, then they started launching their like blower model with uh, an updated clock speed and uh, I've had like probably uh, I don't know five of these but one of the uh, early ones I got it would never overclock past 925 megahertz it was stock or nothing and uh, you know if you would have got one of those early cards you don't really get the same performance as a later card like this. This one will get up to 1125 megahertz, maybe even more. I, you know, they even went past this into the R9 280 phase. This is a card that was in AMD's lineup for a ridiculously long time. Uh, and rightfully so, it was very powerful when it launched and why not keep, you know, uh, revamping it and, uh, you know, coming out with 
newer iterations that are a little bit faster for less money as your product stack goes on and GCN evolves. I, I get it, but uh, I put this in. And the last time I really did a deep dive on this was in 2017. I did a video reviewing the 7970. And then I did a Crossfire video a little while after. But this was very early on in my YouTube career. And uh, I don't know, check out these slides and stuff like, and these graphs. It's like, what am I thinking there? But, uh, you know, I remember being disappointed at 1080p with this and like, PUBG at the time because it was having a hard time maxing the settings out in PUBG uh, and I think PUBG in you know a lot of these uh, you know games have been uh, better optimized better driver support better stuff this is because GCN has been baked in to AMD's lineup for so long you get the added benefit of uh, their driver support just getting better and better with their older cards over time now uh, as far as this competing with the 680 I believe this would blow it out of the water these days not blow it out of the water but it'd be, it would be better just because the vram uh situation especially if you get one of the higher clocked ones the 680 there's no way a gtx 680 can do very well in like the games i'm about to show you the benchmarks and stuff like that like we're talking 2020 games you know modern warfare resident evil 3 for god's sakes you know uh you know it's real hard to run games and this thing can still sort of like red dead redemption all right, it didn't do very good with Rotary Redemption, but I mean, if you still have one of these, you could technically still be playing AAA titles, no problem whatsoever, as long as you're willing to drop your 1080p settings down to about low, medium low. Some games, you can go a little higher than that, surprisingly. So let's fire up the old 7970 and see what kind of a beast workhorse card it can be here in 2020 for triple a and modern esports style shooter games it's going to be a blast Actually still have the box here three gigabytes of memory max effects and resolutions triple your rivals more memory more resolutions higher effects detail gigahertz edition the first generation of ground breaking gpus with a core clock over one gigahertz pci express 3.0 it's still got three gigabytes of gddr5 very relevant low-end specs these days but i mean how does it compare to a lower-end card well Eh, not the greatest. I mean, you saw on those benchmarks, it was doing very well. It was playing Resident Evil 3, a game that came out like 
three days ago here in 2020 and it was doing a big, damn good job of it because I actually played like the first hour and a half of that game on this video card on a much better monitor than this thing could ever run and I was like fine with the level of detail and quality that was there. I was immersed uh, for like an hour, the first hour and a half of that game and before I, I went, like realized I should be working on this video rather than uh, playing Resident Evil on a crappy card when I have better cards laying around. But crappy card? It's not really the the way to describe this, uh, but if you want to compare it to the low end, the 5500 XT 4GB model, that's AMD's current lineup's lowest end card, uh, that card is about 1.5 times faster than this card, and it also of course has 1 gig more VRAM, so if you're talking like Time Spy scores, the 5500 XT can actually double this thing's performance in the GPU score, or Fire Strike, because it's an older API, this does a little bit better, but uh, it still gets, uh, you know, about 4,000, about, yeah, about 5,000 points better, uh, you know, in the graphics score. So, is this thing, like, gonna hang on for too much longer? I don't think so, but I was so impressed that I could fire this thing up in a system and go ahead and play every AAA title that I've purchased in the last six months and uh, you know some high-end esports title modern warfare uh, I mean this thing was playing Red Dead Redemption for God's sakes I mean that is about it's a very hard game to run f for certain reasons but that is about the end of the line for this thing it was not able to do too too well I could have lowered the settings a little further but I think that wouldn't have been worth it 45 frames a second ish you know playing Red Dead Redemption you can get away with it, it you know especially since it's a console game it's definitely some older specs in like an Xbox uh, you know one or PS4 the original ones uh, you know compared to things but anyways Regardless, it did a pretty good job and it surprised the hell out of me in 2020 that if you bought this card eight years ago, you could still be rocking it today and you could technically still be playing every AAA game that comes out and not like be pulling your hair out at the terrible performance. It's still relatively okay if you're willing to jot down the settings a little bit, which is, uh, which is pretty awesome. So, uh, I don't know, 7970 in 2020, I think this is one of the last years we'll be saying that this is still sort of a valid card for, you know, 1080p, uh, triple A games, they're getting harder to run, you know, Red Dead Redemption and stuff like, like, they definitely are, but lower end APIs are still friendly to this thing, played Doom Eternal absolutely fine, uh, you know, 80 frames a second with uh, some medium settings, they definitely did not like uh, you know, the VRAM limit thing, it was telling me it couldn't play at certain, you know, uh, settings in there. I had to dial things down a bit because of the three gigs of VRAM on this. But because of that three gigs, it is still able to get away with a lot more than I think it's uh, GTX 680, uh, you know, d d d rival would be able to do here in 2020. And I will like to test that at some point. So I'm not watching Sumi Joe Instagram and Twitter. This thing is really quite a card. Uh, considering it's eight years old, almost nine years old, well, it's eight years old, and um, it still can get the job done in 2020 in AAA games if you're willing to jot the settings down and play at 1080p. Not a 4K card, not a high refresh rate card by any means, maybe if you're playing like Dota 2 or something, but it can still get the job done. And that's, that's pretty awesome in my book. So this is one of the best cards I think ever made. Uh, for longevity, at least for uh, you know future proofness, and I don't think you could argue with that. So I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. This has been a quick quit playing with the video cards. You're gonna break them. Um, this has been a quick look back at the 7970 in 2020, and this is like the third time or fourth time I've done a video on this card, and it just it keeps on giving. It just keeps on giving. It's still kicking butts in uh, 2020, even if they are low, low res butts. So anyways, I'm at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram, Twitter. Hope you guys are being safe out there. Hope you enjoyed this look back on an older video card. It maybe made some decisions for you if uh, you're thinking of putting this in a retro or an older rig or you know a low, lower spec rig, wondering what it can still do. Pair it with a decent enough CPU and you could be playing all the AAA games, even if you only have one HDMI output and two mini dis mini display port i've never caught that one i i'll, I'll see you guys in another video bye bye <laughs>